The Python Crash Course series is presented by the University Libraries Research Hub. Hi there, I'm Michelle Hazlett, the Librarian for Numeric Data Services and Data Management. I'll briefly introduce some terminology and orient you to some software we'll use in the series. Some of this material is extremely basic. Feel free to skip over parts you already know. The full material is available in text online at this URL, go.unc.edu slash python. You may go ahead and work through the content for the entire series on your own if you wish. If you haven't already, pause the recording here and install the software needed for the workshop. Follow the setup link on the website to find instructions. We recommend Anaconda, but if you're tight on space on your computer, use Miniconda instead. If you're not familiar with coding, Python is a programming language used to send directions to your computer. Other programming languages you might have heard of include ARG and Ruby. There are several reasons to learn to code in one of these languages. Coding allows you to automate tasks to perform them much more rapidly, consistently, and at a much larger scale than what is humanly possible. Once you know one language, it's easier to learn others. We can use Python to write and run scripts. Scripts are basically text files containing programming statements intended to be read by computers. Python has the advantage of being fairly human-readable as well as machine-readable compared to other programming languages like R. Once you have written something in Python and saved it as a script, you can execute it as many times as you like without having to retype the commands each time, and you can share it with others. You can recognize Python script files by the .py at the end of their file names. I'll warn you that there's a bit of a chicken and egg issue with terminology here. I'll introduce some terms on this slide that I actually define in the next few. A distribution gives you a lot of tools in one go. We use the Anaconda distribution because it pulls together so many resources. Anaconda packages the current version of Python with over 150 specialized packages, and it supports hundreds of others. This includes many of the most heavily used packages supporting data transformation and analysis. It also includes software to manage and add new packages, create virtual environments, and more. It is available for both Macs and Windows machines. While it is available for both Python 2 and 3, Python 3 is preferred. An integrated development environment is software that provides tools for composing and testing code in one convenient interface to increase programming productivity. You don't have to use an IDE for coding, but they're often good for beginners. We use Spider in our workshops at UNC since it comes packaged with Anaconda. We're going to look at some specifics about Spider in a minute, but be aware that there are many different IDEs to choose from. As you gain experience, you can choose whether an IDE is right for your purposes and which one works best for you. I mentioned that it's easy to share code, and programmers traditionally borrow or modify scripts written by others. There's no need to reinvent the wheel to accomplish many tasks. Even if a person is writing a script from scratch, they will rely on so-called libraries which are collections of shared code. In a somewhat simplified view, you download the existing code in the form of packages, and these packages are collections of modules. Don't get too hung up on these terms, but it's useful to have a sense of different packages that are available and what they are specialized to do. A lot of specialized modules already exist for Python. For example, the Natural Language Toolkit is useful for text analysis, Beautiful Soup for parsing XML or HTML, so it's useful for web scraping. Matplotlib, among others, is useful for data visualization. Pandas is useful for dataset manipulation. We'll be covering pandas later in the series. And so on. 
In addition, I'll just mention that Jupyter Notebooks and Binder combine coding functions into websites to make code interactive online. You'll see some of this in our live sessions. Now to come back to why we ask you to download Anaconda. If you were working at the command line and wanted to use several different libraries, you would have to install both Python and each library separately. But because Anaconda is, is a distribution, it already includes a lot of these specialized libraries, like the example shown in the blue ovals in this diagram. Actually, it includes all of the things in ovals. You get Python as part of the deal, as well as the tools Spider and Jupyter in yellow, and Pip and Conda in purple are different kinds of tools that help you add additional libraries that aren't included. Of the libraries listed on the last slide, only GDAL and Plotly are not included in Anaconda. Those are examples of libraries that you would have to add in with Anaconda. Now let's talk about Spider, that tool I mentioned to facilitate programs. I want to orient you more to how it works because we're going to start out working with it in Spider. Here's a screenshot of Spider. It has three windows oriented like this when you open it. Each window has a specific purpose. The largest window on the left is the editor, where you can write code and save .py files. You can also highlight lines here and then run them by clicking F9. The resulting code shows in the lower right window the console. Error messages show here too. You can type code directly into the console, but then it won't be saved as a .py file. Note that there are two tabs at the bottom of the window. The IPython console tab is where you usually work. If you go wrong somewhere though, and the console won't let you do anything, you can use this X to close your console instance and start a new one. But then you can also switch to the history log tab to see your past work. It looks like this. This is just a view though. Closing a console instance clears out prior work, so you'll need to repeat commands in the new IPython console to get back to where you were. Which is easy if you were writing out your code in the editor window. You would just highlight the lines of code there that you need to rerun and hit F9 to repeat them. The third window at the upper right has several functions. The variable explorer tab lets you uh, see which variables you have saved. We'll talk more about different kinds of variables and how to save them in the live session. In the Help tab, you can get help with Python commands and also a Spider tutorial. And in the File Explorer tab, you can look at your files just like in a file directory window on your desktop. If you're used to coding in other programs like RStudio, Spider allows you to make its screen mimic the layouts used by some of those other programs. In View, Windows Layouts, you can change the arrangement of these windows to look like RStudio or MATLAB, for instance. So if you've used RStudio, this should look familiar. Also, if a white background sets your teeth on edge, you can change to a dark one in Tools, Preferences, Syntax Coloring. Spider is the name of the default light scheme, but there are several darker ones. This one is called Monokai. You can also change the text color of individual types of code by clicking the Edit Selected button within Syntax Coloring once you've switched schemes. Now we're ready to start looking at Python coding in the first live session. Or you may return to the full Python course at go.unc.edu slash python to preview the content or work through it on at your own pace. See you soon.